member from Simcoe Gray. Thank you, uh, Speaker. My question is to the uh, Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Uh, speaker, in February of uh, 2015, my private member's resolution concerning service clubs received all party support in this House. It called on the government to strike a committee to investigate the legislative and regulatory barriers and burdens facing service clubs, such as the costs of audits, red tape when applying for lottery and liquor licenses, increased regulations and taxes and fees, to name just a few. The government sent my request to the Standing Committee on Social Policy for a mere one-half day of hearings. The committee issued a summary of recommendations, and since then we have heard nothing despite my repeated requests for action on the issues raised by the service clubs. Mr. Speaker, my question is simple. What has the government done to remove the regulatory barriers facing service clubs in all our communities? Thank you, Speaker. And I want to thank the member for the question. I think we all agree that service clubs play a very important role in our communities, and I, I congratulate the member for bringing uh, the bill forward. And our government is very committed to looking at reducing regulatory burdens, red tape that affect affect the. Uh, the, the, the member role that Perth groups like this Wellington. play in our community. So I haven't heard from the member on this uh, recently, so I'd be pleased to discuss with him um, the next steps. And, uh, I, and uh, I, as I say, am a strong advocate for uh, making uh, things easier, for, especially our not-for-profit sector speaker. Uh, the member will know that the not-for-profit corporation has received royal assent, and these uh, kinds of files are very Answer. important to me and to our communities. Thank you. Give supplementary, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Again, to the Minister of Government and Consumer Services. The Rotary Club of Bracebridge has told me this government's ridiculous rules are creating unnecessary obstacles to fundraising. The Rotary Club of Bracebridge raises money for local events and causes and to support local families in need. Every year, they wrap off a car. This year, they added a duck race, but they are unable to get a license to start selling raffle tickets for the car until the duck race is over. That means they will lose two months of, uh, of time for selling the raffle tickets for the car. Speaker, the committee heard about these issues more than six months ago. As life gets harder in Ontario under this government, communities and families rely more and more on service clubs for help. Speaker, why has the minister not made the recommended changes to help these volunteers who are trying to raise money for such worthy causes? Question. Thank you. Minister. Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The members opposite are highlighting a very important point. All of us are concerned about our our, uh, our service clubs to do the job they need in raising money and providing for gaming and bingo as well. And it's something that I'm working on with the OLG and the AGCO to determine how best to provide those services and enable them to have more accommodations. I know working with some of the cities is also part of uh, the issue where they have the, the wherewithal to advance some of those causes. But Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the concerns. We share them with you. We want to make it easier for our service clubs to provide the service that they do so essentially in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. New question, the member from Timiskamy, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Yesterday, we learned that a brokerage in Hong Kong is advertising condo units with a promise to pay the non-resident speculation tax on the investor's behalf. This completely defers, defeats the purpose of the tax, but the Minister of Finance says it's fine because the government is still getting paid. Is the Premier interested in cracking down on speculation and keeping homes affordable, or, like her minister said, is she only interested in filling government coffers? Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, let's, let's, make, let's make no mistake. There's no loophole here. Um, there, if, should this legislation pass, by the way, then there will be a 50% speculation tax that will be applied to all non-resident Canadian buyers who provide and purchase residential homes in the Greater Golden Horseshoe, Mr. Speaker. And no matter how it's being advertised by some independent, all-in price, by some other agency in another part of the world, uh, outside of Canada, the buyers will be paying the tax if they're a non-resident Canadian, and that's just the point that we're making, Mr. Speaker. Yeah.